winter. It could just suddenly appear. Beautiful one day in these mountains and a blizzard the next. But that's the way it's always been in these mountains, in these rural areas of Appalachia. Big old snow, but they're so breathtaking to see, so beautiful. Winter Wonderland. And it changes the landscape. Such wonder. And it can turn cold too after these big snow. But that's the way it is in these mountains. But most down nowadays, we just turn the old heat pump up and relax and look at the snow outside. But you ever think of how our elders and not long ago, how they used to prepare for winter every day. All season long, for months and months, preparing for winter. This didn't surprise them, because they knowed it, they lived it year after year. How they lived in these houses, no insulation, and barely had electricity just coming in, no indoor toilets, no indoor plumbing. That's the way it was in these mountains back in the day, and it still is in a few places. So we'll look at how they prepared for winter all during the summer. Now the people of Appalachia and these mountains, they're kind of resilient, self-sufficient, always have been because they've always been isolated for many a generation in these old mountains. But they started early and on an old farm. Never, you never get seem to finish. There's always something to do on these old farms year round. A lot of people raised on these farms. It's hard work, not complicated. It's just physical labor. But a lot of times they started early in the year, late February, early March. As soon as the ground thawed out, They'd be plowing these fields, preparing for next winter. That's just part of life in these mountains and all these rural areas, getting ready for a garden. And they'd plow all day long, many acres, raising cornfields like this. This is their livelihood on these farms, growing a lot of corn, a lot of vegetables, so they could sell it, make some money. And they had big families on these farms. Not just farms, just the rural Appalachians. Big families, they believed in big families. They depended on each other. And big families, they had a lot of help on the farm. And they'd grow these farms. And when the bounty, bounty come in, they'd share it. And they'd harvest every bit of it. They'd work in teams, the families would. And they'd gather up all these fruit and vegetables when the harvest time came. And they'd prepare all this food. Nothing went to waste. They'd sell on the market what they could, what they could get. But a lot of it here, they would get ready to can it, process it, and work long days at it. And they canned everything. Everything that could be canned, they canned it. Fruits, vegetables, even meat. So when winter time comes, they didn't do without. They prepared for this long before winter came. Had all kinds of vegetables. And these root cellars and stuff, they had potatoes, bushels of them. This is the way they, they done things on these areas. Country. And they'd take their corn, and they'd take it to these little old community mills, these little mills everywhere back then, usually run by water, an old wheel. And they'd put that corn in there, and here's just showing you how these mills work. 
They grind that corn up and make good cornmeal too. Some of the best tasted cornmeal you'll ever get is fresh ground corn. And they made flour too, this way. Different stone. And early in the year, their biggest livelihood back on these old farms, up till just lately, was growing tobacco. This is a big money crop for the farm and the family. And when time come in the fall, when they got it ready, take it to market, it really paid off how much work you put in it, how good of a season you had growing it. This helped pay their taxes, put a lot of food on the table, and clothes and shoes on the family's back. And if you're lucky, they got up this hay. If you had a good season of rain, they could cut hay two to three times that season. And they would make big hay bales out of it and hang it up for their, for their livestock during the winter. So they prepared for that. But nowadays, it's just round bales, not squares anymore. And back then, and they do today, but this is when they used to make old shake roof shingles out of wood. They look like this. The old barns and houses, this is the shingles of the day, old wooden shakes. It was a lot of time, painstaking work to do it. But the best thing that ever come in was the old tin roof. Big sheets of tin. This is so labor safe. It lasts forever. And they made their own molasses too, out of surrogate. Sargon, they'd, they'd raise it in the fields and they'd make molasses with it. The old fashioned way. Grind it up and cook it. And they made their own lye soap too during the summer. They put this up, and this is a good soap to wash yourself with and take a bath. Old eye soap. You still see this being made today. And medicine, they'd harvest this old ginseng out of these mountains, which was plentiful, and then make put the, dry the root out and put it up. And it made good herbal tea, I'm telling you. Good for the blood. And they always kept some poultry around, chickens. Plenty of chicken. They used these chickens, the eggs, for trading down at the old store. They always traded with these eggs. Everybody needed eggs. And every little old place in the farms and communities would raise hogs. They'd raise hogs all summer long, fatten them up. They would keep a couple to sell, and they'd keep a couple to butcher for the winter months. And when it got fall, when the frost started coming in, you had your first good freeze. The families and little groups together, the farmers would get together and they'd have a hog killer. They would take turns on each other's farm, slaughtering these hogs and butchering them up and putting them up for winter. I can remember this many a time on a Saturday morning going to different farms. It was hard work, but they'd butcher these hogs and they'd, they'd render the fat into lard, which is good to cook with. And it's still being used today. They'd render this old hog fat into big old tubs of lard, they'd boil it out. And it was, it was good to cook with and good to preserve foods with too. And they'd sell some of it, trade for it, put it in a smokehouse. But nowadays, they got deep freezes, just put them in a deep freeze. But this is how they used to do it. They'd put them in smokehouses. And they wasn't nothing better growing up than supplement, your, supplement food with wild game. Squirrel hunting, deer hunting, hunting grouse, turkey. It was good eating. That's just a tradition in these mountains. We love this wild game. We love to eat it, too. In a lot of places, a lot of people I know of, 
They would hunt this game too when they wasn't eating it. They'd also keep the hides for pelts. Now these pelts were worth a lot of money, especially these minks. Certain times of year you could make a good lot of profit off of these pelts. Now these old homes, they were built long ago, beautiful old homes, but they didn't have no such thing as insulation in them. These old homes, they just didn't have no insulation. They were built sturdy and strong, but there was no such thing as an old insulation back in them days, and they was real drafty. Especially the smaller home, these little homes up the hollers in these mountains, they were real drafty and they would get cold real easy. And they'd even insulate it, keep the air from blowing through them with newspaper. I used to see a lot of this. I love just to see the old history that's pinned to the wall of old history of what they pinned up just to keep the air from blowing through the house through these cracks in these old houses. And some of them had old fireplaces in them like this old time. It took a lot of wood to keep them going. They were warm. Old places like this. Nothing better for the family sitting around an old fireplace. And he cooked with old stoves like this. Old wood stoves. Old coal stoves or both. They used either one. This is what they cooked out back in the day. Old stoves like this. Many a meal. Good tasting meals on these stoves too. There's something about it. Here's some of different types of old stoves back in the old days. What they went for. What the price of them was. And they had all kinds of little stoves, homemade stoves or anything, anything to put heat in the house for the family. That was the main thing. Family was everything. And it took a lot of wood for these old homes. They started early in the summer, working on getting up enough firewood to keep the house and stoves going during the winter. Nowadays, Easy to just cut wood and chainsaw just in a few minutes. You never have to cut a live one, they're always dying everywhere. And splitting them nowadays, it's nothing to split them with a log splitter, just some physical labor, and it can get hard, but it's so much easier than the old days. And back then, it wasn't no chainsaw, no power tools. It was an axe or a crosscut saw. Hard labor, but they got it done. It worked. And for splitting wood, nothing but an old wedge or a maul, sledgehammer, an old axe, splitting this wood. Here's about the tools we use, too. This is physical labor, but it works. And we still do that today. And even Grandma, I could remember seeing her out right there cutting kindling. It wasn't nothing cutting kindling. He didn't know what sex you are or what size you are, just technique. And it wasn't nothing growing up. Every house you went by in these hollers in these areas, You'd see a pile of coal or a pile of kindling out front but to keep the fire and stoves going in the wintertime. And these old mining camps back then, mining areas, they didn't have big farmland. They just lived day to day in these houses. And for, they used stoves like this. Old warm morning stove. Burn coal. They'd burn you on one side, you'd turn around to toast the other side of you. And a lot of people didn't have no money to buy coal with. So they just, in these mining communities, they'd pick up coal off the tracks. It rolled off these trains as they hauling it through. Free coal. And it got them by. Even people in these coal areas, 
would go to the bank down there where a coal seam sticking out and dig their own coal for winter. Take the whole family and spend a day at it. But it worked. These old people, they survive hard time. Nobody give them nothing. They either made it, traded for it, or raised it, or they done without. That was just their lifestyle in these mountains. They're proud, God-fearing people, and they're self-reliant, and they always have been. So, there's how they usually prepared for winter. They could usually tell by just the sign of nature. But there you go. So, I want to thank you for watching these little videos. Hope you enjoy these old parts of Appalachia. I want to thank you for watching. God bless, and I'll see you next time.